Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to be showing you how you can start styling your website in a way to make it look like a real modern website. So we're going to get started from the top down and we're going to get styling our header for our website. And then we're going to move on to things like the navigation and the main content area, the footer. And sooner or later, we're going to have a really nice looking foundation that we can build the rest of our website on. So let's get started right now. So in the past few videos, we've been covering a lot of foundational stuff and we have what's looking like a pretty lame website right now. So I think it's about time we start get going on actually how to make this website sort of look like something you'd actually want to visit instead of uh, just a total mess. So we're going to start with the top down and we're going to first do the header and then we're going to build a navigation. Then we're going to go into sort of the uh, body, then the footer, and we're going to show you along the way some nice tips and techniques. So now before we get started, it's important to know that the browser defines a whole bunch of styles for us, a bunch of styles that we don't want. Now, there's a lot of strategies for getting rid of these styles, but pretty much the way that people uh, work on the web in a modern way is using something like CSS Normalize. So if we go to Google and we type CSS Normalize, you'll see it comes up. And basically, it allows uh, all browsers to sort of render the CSS the same way, it gets rid of any sort of browser specific stuff, and it just uh, sort of makes your life a little bit easier to start off. So what we can do is essentially just click this download button, and you can see it gives us a whole page of CSS. Now what I can do is copy this by selecting all and then copying. Let's come back to our website. Now in our folder first site, I'm going to click new file and I'm going to hit command S and select, uh, type the word normalize.css and I'm going to paste this all in here. We could paste this into our previously used CSS file and it would work just fine, but we're not going to be modifying any of this CSS. You can paw through it and, and look at it if you'd like, but we're not going to be modifying it. So we can simply just save this and sort of forget about it. But we do need to link it up in our HTML. So let's come to the header here and on the link page, let's come here. And before our styles.css, we want to say normalize.css. So now it's going to be referencing this first one. And then afterwards, it's going to be loading this styles.css. Therefore, anything that we define in styles here is going to override what is being defined in normalize. So now if we did everything correctly, we should come to this page and we should uh, refresh and be able to see some differences right away. The main one is that we no longer have this serif text. We now have a sans serif text and I think it's Arial. It just says font family sans serif. So it's whatever your browser defines as the basic sans serif. And some items will be completely different. If you noticed before we had on the body, we had, we had margin all the way around. So we no longer have that margin. So that makes this nice and easy. It's not really assuming we want to do anything. Okay, so let's come to our page and let's start, uh, go to our HTML first. And the first thing we're gonna do is give a class on this header. So it's gonna say class equals, and this is going to be site hyphen header. Now you might be wondering why we need a class here. Why can't we just say header in our CSS and style it that way? Well, the reason you don't wanna do that is because you can use the header element in places that are other than the header, the very top of your site, the header element can actually mean the header of all sorts of stuff. It can mean the header of a page. It can mean the header of a specific uh, type of content or an article like a blog post or something like that. So we don't want to necessarily say header just in case we want to use that somewhere else. So now we can save this file. We can come to our CSS. Let's get rid of this color red on this H1. Let's just delete all of that. Now what we can say is period site header and then open and close curly brackets. Now we can define some styles here and we want to essentially give this a background color. So we can say background and this is going to be a nice blue color. So the color I've selected is going to be three F five one B five. Okay. So now I can save that. And now in addition to that, I want to say color 
And I want everything inside of this to be the color of FFF or white. Now, with colors like this, where you have uh, repeating characters like FFFFF, you don't have to type six Fs in hexadecimal. If you type just these three Fs here, it's going to get the picture. So we can come in and now we can refresh. Now what you see is that we have our header is blue and our text is white. So that's accomplishing what we want to so far. And however, you'll notice there's this white space above here. Uh, what is that? So the best way to find out is to right click on this and inspect element. If we hover over this, we can see that orange that we decided was the margin before is actually popping out of the header. Now it's a little bit of a weird reason why that does that. We're not gonna get into that right now. However, what we need to do is essentially pull the margin entirely off of this H1. Now what we don't wanna do is pull the margins off of all H1s. So we don't wanna say H1 margin zero. Because if we do this, anytime we ever use an H1 on another page, if it's in a different location, it's gonna have a margin zero and that's maybe not what we want. So because we don't want to make those assumptions, what we can do is target this H1 specifically by saying period site hyphen header and then space and then H1. So the way this works is it says an H1 that's inside of a site header, give it a margin zero. So let's come back here and refresh. And perfect. We now have this text here. It's white. There's no weird spacing or anything like that. However, this blue is coming in a little tight all the way around. What we could do is we could assign this header a height and we could say height 100 pixels, right? And see that makes the height. That makes the height bigger right there. But another thing we could do is add a padding to the header. Now padding is essentially going to add uh, what it sounds like padding on the inside and it's going to push things inside. So we can come here and simply say on the site header padding and what we can do is we can say we can say 20 pixels and 5%. Okay, before we break this down, let's come back to our page and refresh. And as you can see, we now have our header. And uh, as we grow this, you can see it sort of stays there. And cool. So we now have a bit of a header. However, it's maybe a little much. So let's come again and adjust the size of our H1. So we can say font hyphen size. Give this a font size of something like 20 pixels. And let's go ahead and adjust that padding. So like I said before, not to worry about it. Now we're going to dive into this a little bit more. With padding, you can assign things by saying padding hyphen top and simply give it a padding top of 10 pixels. Or you can use this shorthand that we're using here. And the way it goes is it goes top, right, bottom, left. Or if you only have two values, it goes top and bottom, right and left. So by having 10 pixels here, the site header is getting a padding of 10 pixels on the top and bottom and 5% on the left and right. So if we come and hover this over, you can see uh, that the left and right padding is going to be changing when we're making our our site wider, right? It's it's not a constant width at this point, where the top and bottom is a constant 10 pixels no matter what. So this right here, 10 pixels, 5%, 10, uh, is analogous to 10 pixels, 5%. Remember, top, right, bottom, left. So if you'd like, you can just simply shorthand that to this. Perfect, so we now have our site header. Let's refresh, and it's looking quite a bit better. So now what are some other things we can do this? We can actually give this a bit of a shadow so it maybe hangs over the site a little bit, adding some depth here. Now you don't wanna go crazy with shadows and you don't always wanna use them, but sometimes it's nice to have them. So we can say box hyphen shadow, like so, colon, and now the first pixel is 
Now the first property is going to be uh, how far to the right or left it goes. We don't want it to go right or left, just up and down, so we're gonna say zero. Then this is up and down. If we say one pixel, it's gonna go down one pixel. If we were to say negative one, it would go up one pixel. Since this is a shadow that we want on the bottom of our header, we want it to go down. Okay, in addition, we can now say how much you want it to spread out. So we wanted to spread out three pixels and let's give it a color as the next property. And this color is going to be three, three, three. Okay, if I save this and refresh, you can see we now have a gray, it's 333 shadow on our text right here. If we want this to be less strong than 333, since it's on top of white, we can take this to a lighter gray. So we can say something like 999, save this, refresh, and you can see it's a little less strong, but it still definitely exists. Okay, so we now have a nice looking site header. This site's already light years better than it was in the last video. So we're only going to keep taking this further and further. In the next video, we're going to show you how you can build a navigation into our header. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.